Hello, and welcome to another video from the technical team at River Meadow. In this demonstration, we will be performing a fully automated migration and transformation of a Windows workload to Microsoft Azure. This scenario is based on NS support for both Windows Server 2008 and SQL Server 2008. In this video, you will see River Meadow migrate the workload up to Azure, perform successive in-place OS upgrades to Windows Server 2019, and perform a SQL upgrade to SQL Server 2017 and SQL Management Studio 1804. This demo leverages River Meadows in-place OSF upgrade technology, as well as migration extensions, which is River Meadows post-migration scripting engine. Customers can leverage migration extensions for many different use cases, including automating target cloud readiness for handover to IT operations, as well as application modernization as seen in this video. So what is the migration extension written for this scenario doing exactly? After the migration with in-place OS upgrade completes, it is performing a silent upgrade of SQL instances to 2017, performing necessary reboots, silently removing SQL Server 2008, and silently installing SQL Management Studio. This end-to-end -end migration with transformation allows customers to automate the modernization of OS and application while transitioning to the new target cloud. Now let us transition to the demo so you can see these steps in action. We will start with our source machine. In this case, this is Windows Server 2008 R2 Data Center with Service Pack 1. Next, we'll open up SQL Management Studio that ships with SQL Server 2008 R2. In this case, we'll use Windows Authentication and log into the database. You'll notice that the version here is 10.50.6000, which is SQL Server 2008 R2 SP3. We have a bunch of databases that are here, and these are again all in scope for migration. Lastly, we'll take a look at the drive layout or the disk layout. You'll see that we have a C drive where the operating system bits live, an L drive where the SQL logs uh, live, an M drive where the SQL databases live, and finally a T drive, which is where the SQL temp directory is, as well as our new SQL 2017 binaries that we'll be using for the automated installation. Now that we've taken a look at the source machine, we're ready to begin migration. We'll start by logging into the River Meadow SAS portal. Here you can see that I'm logged in with a customer org and a project name default. For more information about projects and orgs, we have another video that will walk you through that. We also have links to all of our documentation from within this portal for each target cloud that we support. In my case, we're going to be doing this migration to Azure. To start, we've deployed a cloud appliance into Azure, in this case, US East, and we're receiving valid heartbeats from the cloud appliance, which means that we're now ready to proceed with the actual migration. Before we add a source machine for migration, first we'll go to Manage, Migration Extensions, and add the script that I've created that will perform the SQL upgrade to SQL Server 2017, the uninstallation of SQL Server 2008, and finally, the installation of SQL Management Studio. This script runs as a batch file. In other scenarios, migration extensions can also run in bash or as an executable. The final allows us to wrap PowerShell, Perl, Python, or JavaScript to customize post-migration scripting to fit the required use case. Here, we'll go ahead and upload the script that I've created. By default, the script will stay on the Rivermeadow SaaS infrastructure for 30 days. The script can always be extended if required to fit the project use. Next, we'll go to Manage, Source Inventory, and add our source machine for migration. I'll click on Add Source button and enter in the source IP, source server credentials, and in this case, I'll add a migration group, the target cloud to be Azure, and a target VM size of B2MS, which could have come from a third-party cloud right-sizing assessment. Now that our source is added, We'll go ahead and click this source, and we'll click on the small cloud icon in the Actions pane to start the migration. You'll notice that the target cloud here is our cloud appliance, which is deployed into Azure US East. The migration type that we're performing for this is a full migration. Next, we'll run through migration readiness to ensure that our source machine meets all of the requirements for us to perform the migration. If it doesn't, we'll show you which pieces that require remediation. In our case, both our cloud appliance as well as our source are ready for next steps, which is migration. Here we can see the migration profile, which serves as a blueprint for our migrations to the target cloud. For brevity, we'll only highlight some of the options available that are suited for this demo. 
Firstly, we'll look at the migration scheduler. In the advent that we need to run this migration after hours. Note that the time here is based on the user's local computer time. Next, we have the global settings section of the migration profile. This is really helpful when performing multiple migrations as the global settings will get applied to each migration below. In our case, since we only have one migration, we'll go ahead and just do one thing, which is to turn on boot diagnostics in Azure and select a storage account. This setting will get automatically applied within our detailed settings. Next, we'll take a look at the detailed settings section. Go ahead and make some changes here to help with the migration. First thing that we'll do is we'll change the name of the VM to make it easier to find in Azure. We'll leave the default transfer method, in this case block-based, for this purpose. We'll choose a resource group. In my case, I have one that's already existing. We'll take a look a little bit about the source and destination operating system, because that'll become key in a minute here. We'll also take a look at the size of the machine. You can see that our standard B2MS is larger than what is on-prem. We'll take a look at our disks, as well as the use, used disk space, to make sure that we choose the appropriate disk uh, type on the target. In my case, because it's a SQL Server, a high-performing application, we want to make sure that we're choosing premium disk that has the maximum rated IOPS. We'll take a look to see that all partitions that we talked about before on the source are all in scope for migration, including C, L, M, and T. We'll enable networking on the target. We have the ability here to specify a static private IP if we want to. I'll go ahead and leave this empty, but it's really helpful if you need to do firewall change approval in advance of the actual migration that we can actually set the IP at this time. Next, we'll go ahead and choose a network security group for isolation. If you don't have one pre-existing, River Meadow will also define one for you by enabling the checkbox there and force target network isolation. We also have additional isolation techniques like disabling DNS registration on the adapter, which we'll leave empty. And we'll go ahead and add a tag here. This will help me to sort this machine later when we get to Azure. In this case, the tag is owner equals River Meadow. If we wanted to, we could actually turn on different availability options depending on the VM's type, including availability zones and availability sets. And we'll skip over that. Notice that our boot diagnostic is enabled based on the global settings that we've defined above. If I had a Microsoft Enterprise Agreement, I could enable Azure Hybrid Use Benefit to save money on my licensing for the VM. And finally here, we're going to choose Windows Server 2019 Data Center as our target operating system. So this is where we select our in-place OS upgrade. Lastly, we'll select the migration extension that we uploaded in the previous step to run post in-place OS upgrade to actually do the SQL installation and uninstallation steps as defined inside of this demo. When we're done everything, we can go ahead and click on continue to proceed with the migration. Pre-flight checks will initiate to confirm that all data entered in this form will not cause any issues during the actual migration. Once this has been validated, the migration is set to execute. Now that the migration is running, we'll go ahead and click on the small I or information icon to take a look at the detailed migration steps. We'll speed up these four steps, including instantiate target, which creates the new target VM in Azure, the data sync step, which typically takes the longest amount of time. Here we provide all of the migration telemetry to help you understand bandwidth as well as estimated time to completion to migrate data. Once data sync completes, we'll execute the preparing target stage, which includes cloud driver installation as well as cloud software installation. Finally, we'll run the in-place OS upgrade step, but we'll pause at two places here to take a look at the progress on the target machine. Here at 47% complete, we'll pull in a screenshot of the target machine that's actually running within Azure. You'll notice at this stage that we're running Windows Server 2012 and we started from Windows Server 2008 R2. Let's move this out of the way and continue with the upgrade. At 52% nearing completion of the in-place OS upgrade step, we'll go ahead and pull in another screenshot from Azure to see that Windows updates are being applied to the Windows Server 2019 upgrade step. This ensures that our target OS is always up to date. We'll let the remaining steps of the in-place OS upgrade complete to 100%, and we'll take a look at one final screenshot from Azure of the completed target. Here we have the login screen for Windows Server 2019, which is our end state goal. We'll also pull in an email that I received to let me know that the migration completed successfully and gives me details about the target machine, including that in-place OS upgrade was enabled to Windows Server 2019, the volumes that were in scope, as well as a little bit about the target size of the machine that we've migrated.
Now that our migration and in place source upgrade with SQL upgrade is successful, let's RDP into the target machine. Here we'll validate that SQL Server 2017 has been installed, that the databases have been upgraded to the newest SQL version, and that SQL Server Management Studio 1804 has also been installed. We'll log into SQL Management Studio for the first time on the target machine. We'll see the new authentication types, but we'll go ahead and keep the Windows authentication that we did on the source machine and log into the database engine. You'll notice that the database version here has been upgraded to 14.0.1000.169, which is SQL Server 2017. We also have all of our databases here in a consistent state, just as we did on the source. Lastly, we'll go ahead and take a look at the apps and features that are on this destination or target machine. We'll see here that all of the SQL Server 2017 components, SQL Management Studio 1804, have been installed successfully. We've also in the script uninstalled SQL Server 2008 to make sure that this machine is now clean and ready for operational handover. This concludes our video demonstration of a Windows Server 2008 with SQL Server 2008 workload migrating from on-premise to Azure as a target cloud. We also ran an in-place OS upgrade to Windows Server 2019 and we leveraged a migration extension to modernize the application. In our case, SQL Server 2008 going to SQL Server 2017. With minimal inputs and time from a migration specialist, we have taken a migration from beyond lift and shift into transformation via modernization in a fully automated fashion. These same steps can be applied to hundreds or thousands of sources within the estate to realize both cloud adoption and to mitigate CSA or custom support agreement penalties based on end of support operating systems and applications. We really hope that you've enjoyed this video presentation and please feel free to reach out to us to see how we can help you in your transformation efforts. Thank you again for your time.